Welcome to the Commander Crew, a Magic the Gathering Commander YouTube channel where we ask the question, who's your commander? We want to thank you for watching our videos. You can help support us by liking this video, subscribing to our channel, and hitting the bell notification icon. You can also go to thecommandercrew.com to check out our t-shirts, masks, pet hoodies, and other Commander Crew goodies. If you want to buy any of the cards seen in this video, be sure to click our TCG Player affiliate link in the show notes below. Lastly, you can help us out by heading to our official Patreon page and becoming a direct supporter of the channel. Now let's, now, go let's get to, to the video! video. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Can the Quarters Compete? And thanks for tuning in. Here on Can the Quarters Compete, we use the decks from the Commander Quarters and put them to the test in the gauntlet against other decks in the meta. Our goal is to see how the strong budget decks are able to compete against some of the strongest decks in the format. On this week's episode, we are featuring Omnath, Locus of Creation. The tactic of this deck is Landfall and Flicker. Landfall is an ability that allows something to happen when a land enters the battlefield. Since we're already going to be playing lands to begin with, this is an extremely powerful ability. With Omnath, Locus of Creation, you're capped at three landfall triggers for itself, so with this deck we're going to incorporate a flicker effect to reset the landfall count. I'd like to shout out all our followers as it's because of you that us at the Commander Crew continue to create Magic the Gathering content. If you have not already, please remember to like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification for future videos. We've also started a Patreon, so please subscribe there as well as it'd be a great help. Thank you again for all the support. Over the course of Magic history, there have been multiple forms of ramp to allow lands into the battlefield. Landfall basically is probably the most powerful ability to ever exist. Such basic ramp spells include Rampant Growth, Edge of Autumn, and Farseek. They're pretty much in every single deck. Now there are specific landfall cards that can trigger an endless amount, but Omnath is only going to trigger a few times. So to reset this each turn, we're going to use a flicker effects such as Ghostly Flicker and Ephemerate to bounce and put it back on the battlefield and reset the amount of triggers. The golden pink from this episode comes from Tatiova Benthic Druid. There's a 3-3 Merfolk Druid for 3 green blue that reads, Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you gain a life and draw a card. Now since there are going to be so many lands into the battlefield, this is going to create so much value in the long term with all of these lands. With this deck, we're told that an average Omnath deck is going to run you almost $1,600. What? $1,593.42 is the average right now. Obviously, that's because of all the, the fetch lands, which are stupid, stupid money. This deck, 50 bucks, And boy, is that a $50 well spent. In this deck, I'm going to be playing the standard deck and not the upgraded deck, just to see how well it can play out. Landfall has always been a fan favorite, and Omnath seems to be the new go-to choice. We're going to see how quickly we can overrun our opponents with more triggers than they can able to even keep up with. I was far too excited to play this deck, and I have played a few games so far, but I can tell you right off the bat, this deck is insane. Now, can we prove that Omnath Locus of Creation is strong enough? Can we prove the quarters compete? Let's get to that gameplay. Now let's get into that gameplay. Look, we got Omnath Locus of Creation. Yeah, everyone, everybody is going to be building this deck. We all know it is. Let's see. Let's get in that gameplay. All right, now let us get into that gameplay. Once you realize that you're not in a buddies only match, you can start the game right away. Usually helps quite a bit. Uh, opening hand, trash. I'll go my leg in this, see if I get more than one land. Beautiful, more than one land. I am golden. Okay, so let's clear all this out. Open this up. All right, everyone, like I said earlier, we are playing Omnath Locus. Of creation, the new four color Omnath from the new set of Zendikar Rising, which I'm sure everyone is super, super, super excited to play. Uh, I've been playing it a little bit now. It's pretty insane. At first, I was like, oh, this stinks that they cut it off at three lands for Omnath's ability. But playing it in Commander and in Brawl and Standard, it's pretty epic. I'm not going to lie. Makes you wonder what they're going to make when they have uh, the five color going on. I'm going to keep this opening hand. Our opponents today, let's just kick it off real quick, quick. We have Blue B5 again, coming back at us with another episode. He is playing Tassiker, the Golden Fang, which is five and a Black Fairy 4, five Human Shaman with Delve. Two Simic Simic, mill two cards, then return a non-land card, of an opponent's choice from your grave to your hand. A lot of good recursion, put stuff in the bin, bring them back over and over and over again. Pretty awesome card. Then we have Jehu. 78 playing 
Demon Lorn Bells and Lock. Four black black for a 6-6 six, six Elder Demon. Flying Trample. When it enters the battlefield, exile cards in the top of your library until you exile a non-land card. Then put that card in your hand. If the cards convert a mana cost is four or greater, repeat the process. It deals one damage to you for each card put in your hand this way. Uh, truly pretty awesome. Just basically keep bouncing things over and over and over again. Uh, bringing things back to from the grave at your hand. I'd like to see how that plays out. Never really seen him as a commander, more so like in the 99, but we'll see how that plays. And then we have, uh, yeah, it's a long name, Eiko Civizencio. Sorry if I'm butchering that. Playing Talran Sky Summoner, a 2 2 Merfolk Wizard for 2 blue blue. Uh, whenever you cast an instant sorcery, you create a 2 2 blue Drake. Uh, spelled blue, it's mono blue spell slogan. Simple, quick, simple to the point. I love it a lot. All right, he played with an island. I played a mountain, and Bluebee played a, a swamp into a death threat shaman. Beautiful turn one. So you gotta figure a lot of people are gonna play. Uh, what do you call them? fetch lands? This way you can help out with that. Let's see if uh, Bell's not. No turn one play on him. Next turn I'm gonna play. We'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm wondering if I can play the Azorius Chancery. All right, so Echo played a Mind Stone. Great to a little bit of mana rock ramp. Mind Stone's really good because late game you can always sacrifice it to draw a card. I always do like that. I will play my Forest. I can play additional land this turn. So I'm just going to do this. I'm going to draw a card. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'll play this. And then I'm going to do Bounce the Forest. So I still have seven cards in my hand. That was probably one of my best turn twos when it comes to a bounce land. That was pretty epic, I'm not gonna lie, because now turn three, I'm gonna have four mana. Uh, guess who couldn't come out now? I'm gonna have to look at the creation, because I'll have literally the exact amount of mana that I need. It's pretty epic, not gonna lie. Uh, let's do this. I don't know why Read the Runes is in the deck. Draw X cards for each card drawn this way, discard a card, unless you sacrifice a permanent. Maybe just discard a bunch of lands. Uh, Bluebee plays a Mana Confluence, such a good card, very expensive, but great card. Let's see what he plays for his turn two. Alright, he's going to exile my Explore to make me lose two life. So stuff like that, so you, in this case, obviously he went after me right away, but he can use that to get rid of big things that are recur recursive. Uh, especially, for example, like Bells and Lock, if it puts things in the graveyard, you can exile those things. And he can gain life, or he, he, he can make his opponents lose life. It's pretty awesome. Alright, he does not have a following turn after that, so then we have Jehu plays Castle Lockthwain, and then now Aiko is playing a Palladium Mirror. Uh, getting a lot of good ramp on that. It is all colorless, but it is still phenomenal ramp. Uh, Temple of the False God, it's a very good card, but the fact is, I'm not a fan because if you draw it between the, for the first five, uh, four lands, it's basically a dud. It just sits there. Uh, I'm, I should potentially play out my Cross and Verge. But I'll, I'll wait for that right now. I'm probably just going to get the commander out there. Just get it rolling out now. It's probably going to become a target, but we'll see how it rolls. I'm going to draw a land. I'll draw a card. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm just going to get rid of the Read of the Runes because I'm not really sure what it's designed to do. I'm sure it's designed for land recursion. Basically, draw a bunch of cards, discard a bunch of lands, and then bring them all back. So I'll just get rid of the Read the Runes. So next turn I can play the Terramorphic Crack it, and then I'm going to have two lands into the battlefield. So I'm going to get four mana off of one land. Like, it's insane. Like, that's literally, literally insane. Alright, let's see what we got here. He plays a Forest. I wonder if he's going to follow up for his turn three. I I'm sorry, like, I... The fact that, like, you can literally play two lands, which a fetch land technically considers two lands at that point, you know? Uh, you can definitely make the deck so much more powerful just by like, cramming in a bunch of fetch lands, obviously. Uh, this is a lot more budget-based version, so, like, Cross and Verge, Terramorphic Expanse. They're not the greatest cards in most decks, but in this case, you're going to trigger Omnath twice for a single turn. And then that way, on that second land entering, you're going to get the whole mana right back. So red, green, white, blue. It's pretty absolutely insane. Uh, I'm wondering if he'll, Death right, Death right will exile my Read the Runes. Uh, you never know. Anything else in the graveyard? Something else? Just mine. All right, follows up with the Chromatic Lantern. Let's see what Jehu's going to do on his turn three. I'm hoping that he gets to play out pretty well because last time we played, there was really middle player playing out too much. 
Uh, just taps down his mana. No ramp going on. This mono black, but you never know when it comes to that. All right, let's see what Aiko's going to do. Now he's going to have one, two, three, four, five mana. Probably if he plays a land, he'll have six on his turn three. Uh, turn four, which is pretty awesome. Good curve so far, you know. You want to be around six for turn four. That way you're on a uh, good solid pace. All right, target player draws two cards. Deep analysis. Good card because it does have uh, flashback. Cards that have flashback, never forget about those cards because they do... Late game, when you're just sitting there with extra lands doing absolutely nothing, you're going to have a lot more value out of that. All right, I drew a Wayfarer's Bobble. So if I do, I'll gain four life. All right, pop that there. And then I'm going to crack the Terramorphic Expanse, gain four mana, cast my Zendikar Royal. This is absolutely just bonkers. All right, I'm going to Forest, because I have plenty of mana of everything. Like, this is my turn four. Like, technically, I just get four mana by playing a fetch land. Like, that's absolutely epic. All right, and then cast this out here. I'm probably going to put the Ruin Ghost. Yeah, I'm going to put the Ruin Ghost because I want to be able to flicker certain things later on. And then I'm going to put the Bobble out there. All right, put the Bobble. So I want to make sure I was, I'm able to get two land drops in a single turn. That way I can keep the, the momentum going. Exile target land you control, then return to the battlefield. That's very good because I'm going to attack blue because he, he just did the two damage to me earlier. Because you can flicker a land. So that's an ab ability to basically get more land drops uh, for landfall. And it's super, super budget, you know? All right, Bluebee takes the four damage. I'm going to probably exile my land. Uh, he exiles the deep analysis. That's, that was good because at that point, late game, it was only going to be one and a blue plus three life, which three life is nothing when it comes to commander. Uh, basically, for two mana, he gets to draw two cards, which is on curve phenomenal. Four mana for two is not the greatest, but two mana, two cards. That's something to really watch out for. All right, plays a strip mine. He may use the strip mine on either the castle, the temple, or my Azorius Chancery. Because those are all really good lands as of right now. But you gotta make sure that you watch that Aiko did not get another land drop. So that temple is just basically sitting there doing nothing now. Alright, let's see who's gonna play. He taps on his mana. I'm wondering, because he's not in the graveyard yet. So he's probably gonna start milling himself out so he can cast Tassiger later on. Uh, cast a Rhystic Study. Rhystic Study is one of the best cards. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, you may draw a card unless they pay one. Slows down people quite a bit, so you gotta watch out for that because you you don't want to just basically give him all the uh, draw off that card because it can do so much work the longer it stays out there. So depending on what I draw next, I may simply just play a land, uh, activate the bobble. If I gain something, if I draw something that's like worth playing, I'll then eight essence flux my commander. Then flicker another land, that way I can I gain four more life. But it, at that point, only four more life is not really going to do anything. If I can get something that plays additional lands, then maybe. Uh, let's see, Jehu hasn't really done anything just yet. He's got three mana as of right now. This is turn four. No rocks or anything like that at all ramping him up. Again, you watch out for mana. Uh, mono black, it does have a lot of good uh, doubling effects for it comes to doubling up your mana and tripling up your mana. But there's no actual direct ramp. So about them creatures or the rocks to help establish those spells to start building up. All right, Jehu just taps his four mana. He did get a fourth land at least. That way, he's still technically he's still on curve, but he hasn't played any spells his first four turns, which is kind of I'm like wondering what's gonna happen with that. Let's see. Aiko draws a fourth land. He still has the mana right now. He's on turn five when he still has five mana. So just like I was saying before, he is technically still on the curve. But he should technically have his fifth land on the battlefield. Because uh, right now that temple, it is a very good card. But like I said earlier, it's just sitting there right now. It's not really doing any value for him. Because he doesn't have his other uh, lands to put in the battlefield for it. Alright, he plays a Guardian Idol. So he himself may be playing a budget version of this deck. Because Talran can be like, I think, a couple of bucks in paper. Like it's that cheap. Because most of the spells... They're just cheap, cheap spells. They've got to start triggering Talran over and over and over again, and basically amassing a massive board. I myself will actually probably play Talran last week, uh, next week, just so I can see how, like, how super of a budget we can build it. Like Guardian Angel, Guardian Angel, Guardian Idol is a great card. It does enter tapped, which when it when it enters tapped, it's basically at that point it's a three drop. There are three drops that tap for mana instantly. So I'm kind of like weary on those mana rocks that do enter tapped for two mana. So they're kind of like just sitting there. Uh, Narset, a part of veils. Phenomenal, phenomenal card. Uh, this way, each opponent can only draw one card each turn. It's the 
Ashiok is the biggest issue that would have stopped me down because Ashiok actually prevents opponents from searching their libraries and then mills and exiles their uh, libraries themselves. Narset prevents us from drawing more than one uh, card a turn. I'm not really drawing more than one card. If I do flicker out the Omnath, I would be drawing. I do like how the, he has flicker effects in this deck, but I can simply just swing my Omnath over at the Narset and it's not going to do anything. I may keep the Narset there just for the time being because I don't want Ristic to go off, but he's still going to technically get the one draw each turn. So like, doesn't really matter, you know? We'll see what I draw when I draw my card for the turn. But he has not drawn another land though, so that's kind of unfortunate. Alright, I drew a Retreat to Ameria, where it's, uh, I gotta create a 1-1 one, one, or creatures you control get plus 1, plus 1. So let's put that out there. I'm gonna play the white mana. I don't know if I should even do anything. I, I want to flicker a land, but it's not gonna really do much for me. I'm not gonna pay the 1 for Ristic, because I'm probably gonna try to probably go into Crack the Wayfarer's Bobble. Just start filling the board with some uh, one ones and whatnot. Cause this is only till end of turn. The new one where it's plus one plus one counters, which is it's the fact that kind of upgrade is epic. Like you go from a one one each turn uh, to like a counter. Like who thought that that was a good idea? You know, I'm gonna create a one one. I'm not gonna auto you to that because in some terms I may want to. Like, just pump the entire team to get that extra damage. This is on the battlefield. Tapped. Yep, that's tapped. If I flicker a land... Okay, this is a 2-2. Two, two. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's the wrong... That's the wrong one. Yeah, that's the wrong text on that. <laughs> this creature's power type is not R equal to the number of creatures you control. Uh, but this was actually whatever land it does to create a 2-2. Two, two. It is a 2-2, two, two, but it's not right. Uh, let's just flicker a land... I'll just flicker, I guess, this? Yeah, I'm gonna flicker that because at that point, I'm gonna wanna bounce another land so I can draw more lands next turn. Yeah, it's gonna enter tapped, but not the end of the world. Create another 1-1. One, one. So I'm gonna have four mana, so. Oh, I, I can act it, so. Here's the thing, like, I wanna obviously activate the bobble right now, and it would do four damage to each opponent, and then four damage to his planeswalker, but it, See, I'm playing multiple spells, and it's stopping Bluebee from drawing. So it's like, I don't really want to do that right now. Alright, I'm going to just bounce the mountain to my hand. It's like, do I do, I do it, or do I not do it? I would draw another card. But then I, I, I let Bluebee go off. So I'm just going to let it chill for now. I'm going to swing into the JQ. So I want to keep that. That Narset's definitely helping out the board state. I could swing back at Bluebee, but I'm just like sitting here swinging at the same person over and over again. It's not really worth it. Alright, he is not going to block, so let the damage go through. I do now have... I kind of wish that forest was uh, the Essex Flux, so I could like, basically play it on my turn. But I am starting to grow the board. Potentially, I can give everything plus one, plus one next turn, at least twice. Because I can flicker the lands. So it'll be... One, two, so two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty-three damage. That's quite a bit of damage. So yield through this turn. So I can't really do anything on the turn, so I'll just yield right through it. I kind of wish it's a bit much. Don't get me wrong, but if the Omnath did four damage each creature your opponents control, like whoo! The amount of power on that would have been insane. Because getting three lands, I've I've noticed getting three lands in a single turn is not a difficult task. Uh, Bluebee didn't play anything. Uh, I'm wondering what's going to happen now. He does have a full hand of cards. He may just be waiting to do something with it because all his mana is untapped and seven cards in the hand, and he's playing blue. You generally need to assume they have a counter. Uh, let's see what Jay he was going to do. I don't know at this point. He's done nothing. Plays a swamp. So he's got five mana now. Turn five. I have no idea. Oh, I wonder if he's doing something. He casts a final parting. It's going to put several cards into the graveyard. So one goes in the hand, one goes in the yard. I'm wondering what he's going to search for and put in the yard. 
All right. In his graveyard, he puts a platinum angel. You can't lose the game. You can't, your opponents can't win. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's gonna have some recursion because he. You gotta figure he does nothing for five turns, right? And then puts a platinum angel in the graveyard. Like something's gotta happen with that. Let's see what Echo does. Echo casts a gilded lotus. Who it's funny, like he's got three lands, but he's casted the Palladium Mirror, the Mind Stone, and the Guardian Idol. With no issues, you know? Alright, and then does not have a follow-up after he plays the Gilded Lotus. Uh Still stinks he only has technically two lands right now because the temple doesn't tap for anything. Alright, sweet. We drew a tunneling geopede. That'll do one damage to each opponent, but I do need red, so I'm gonna play the red first. Because then I'm gonna play that out there. I'm not gonna buff the whole team just yet, because it's not really worth it. But I wanna make sure I got that tunneling geopede out there. I may end of turn Aiko. Uh, and of Echo's turn, do the Omnath with the uh, Essence Flux. It's pretty insane. Gain four life. Because you're going to probably play a land at least every single turn, you know? Alright, play the Tunneling Geopede. Uh, no. I'm wondering if I should... So I'm not really doing anything, you know? Let's just do this. One of the blue source. Let's buff the team this time. Do one damage to everything. Well, each opponent, you're saying. Always yield to that one, though, because you just do. Like, I have this four mana now. I have nothing to do with it, so it kind of stinks, you know? Uh, I kind of want to flicker the land. But it's going to do four damage to the Narset, which has slowed down Blueby so much, so i got to watch out for that. Just let that chill. All right. Echo is the highest, so I'm going to do this into Jehu. These into Blueby and these into Aiko. Leaving up this. I may flicker out the island because then I can uh, do the Essex Flux on that and then draw a card addition at the end of the turn or whoever's turn I want to do it on. Uh, all right, Blueby's trying to do something right now. I'm trying to wonder. No, no responses. So I want to make sure I keep the. Uh, don't lead, turn, uh, turn on the auto yield. Just so I can response, just in case. Alright, everyone took the damage on that one. Just bypass the next turn. I have some protection for my Omnath. Where I can tap the Ruin Ghost. Flicker out the island and then cast the Essence Flux. He's probably exiled, yep, exiles my Terramorphic Expanse. And then Cyclonic Rifts. Alright. So back to my hand would be one, two. So at that point, I'm just gonna do it. Get some more value before the Cyclonic Rift resolves. Cause back to my hand's gonna be one, two, three, four, five cards. It's gonna stink that I'm losing all my elementals and such forth, but that's not the end of the world. Uh, apparently, it didn't exile the island like I wanted it to, but it is, it is what it is. It's fine. I'm at 48, my opponents are at 24, 21, 24. So I, this, is, this is putting in the work, you know? Oh, a disallow. I am honestly, honestly like a little confused by that one because that was also like slowing my entire board down too, you know? Interesting, interesting, interesting. That was very interesting. So it makes you wonder like what Aiko has in his hand that he like, he clearly has to have something if he's doing all that, you know? I'm just gonna yield at this point now. All right, Blueby just skips through through his entire turn. Um, next turn, I can probably kill Jehu because I'll have enough to swing with a one one count. Uh, plus one plus one, you know. Uh, it's one two, three four five six seven eight nine. That's so plus eighteen plus eighteen. All right, Blueby kept open all his mana. So, whatever Jehu or Aiko or myself do have, <laughs> I don't know. I'm still confused as to why Aiko uh, countered the Psych Rift because it, it was doing something. All right, what is he doing now? Scourge Familiar, three two Imp, Flying Discard a card. Okay, what the? What is this? Uh, discard a card. Add black mana. 
Okay, so he's got six mana in his hand, technically right now. Seven when you count the land, uh, one of the battlefield. It's pretty good. That's like really, really good. If you just like draw a boatload of cards, you know? Especially if you have a recursion deck. Basically just dump everything, bring it back, dump everything, bring it back. It's probably got like a combo in that somewhere, you know? And then Echo disconnects. Like, you counter and then you scoop. Why? I, I don't get it. Like, are we stuck now? Like, you, you, you counter and then you scoop. Why? That makes no sense. Alright, let's see what Jay Hughes gonna do now, probably. Discards a bunch of cards. Swamp, Swamp, Glimmer Post. Wow, he had a lot of lands in his hand. Discards Dread Return, which is a recursion thing. Alright, Dread Return. Probably got a cast with flashbacks. No, he doesn't have three creatures. Cast Demon Lord Bells and Lock. Where it's whenever it enters the battlefield, exile the top card from your library until you exile a non land. He might have just a lot, a lot of lands in the deck, you know? If the card is CMC is for a greater, repeat it. It deals one damage to you for each card put in your hand this way. Probably just one? I'm wondering though, yeah? Because it's clearly a, a recursion deck, so he's got the Scourge Familiar. He's got no cards in his hand, but he can basically just go crazy. It's probably everything super like CMC 4 or greater, you know? So he's going to put everything into his uh, hand until he gets the Platinum Angel onto the battlefields, and then just repeat the process, you know? Let's see how many cards deep that he'll go. Was it one card? Exile. It was a Swamp was the next card. No, because it's until you reveal non-land. Uh, I guess you don't have to reveal it. You only lost one life, so... Alright, choose an artifact. Its owner shuffles it into their library. Alright, play Cross and Verge. Have a bunch of stuff go off right now. Alright. I'm gonna buff the team up. Just makes it easier that way. Cause I gotta watch out that... The Ristic Study can start going off, you know? What, so, like, like, for example, right, this right here. Why not just put Naturalize? Choose Artifact or Enchantment, its owner shuffles it in their library. Like, yeah, it's removal at its speed, but, like, Naturalize. There's a way better option for that, you know? Alright, Bluebee's doing something. Cast Beast Within. I'm gonna Essence Flux it. Thank God I kept that in my hand, you know? I'll probably just pay the mana because I have the mana now, you know? I'll use the Azorius Chancery to do it. Oh, he's doing something. Counters it. Let's do this. And then I'm also going to flicker a land. Turn off all yields. Because if I can get another trigger before this all goes through, it'll help out, you know? Alright, and then I'm going to... No, for the Ristic. Actually, yeah. Blue for the Ristic. Target land, I'm gonna flicker the green. Get some more tr triggers. And I always yield the Omnath. Alright. I'm at 50, so I gained the 4 life from that. So this would technically be the 4 mana. But I don't know if it's gonna resolve. Create an elemental. Everything gets plus 1 plus 1. Shuffle back in. The chromatic link, just so we can clear out the data he has. I want the data, the, the, the mana fixing. Disallow goes in the stack. That goes there. I'll pay one for Ristic. Yes. If this goes off, then I'll get the four mana, but I don't think it's going to resolve because it's going to die right now. Hit OK. I get a 3 3 beast. Recharge the command zone. Do I get the four mana? I get the four mana. Sweet. I have two mana remaining. One, two. Recast my commander. This is insane. Obviously, like, the bells and lock... Nah, not the bells and lock. The echo slowed things down because of the... The psych rift, but... Alright. He can block two things over here. So, that will put in one, two, three... Exo target land, adds a mana. So he's got two mana right now. He's probably gonna target some uh counter it. It would just make sense. 
if he has the counter anyway. He's got seven cards in his hand. And he, he exiled the car with his death right, so it makes sense to do it. Yep, counter. Oh, the OG counter spell. Beautiful. Uh, not playing this. So, no to this. Alright, I'm going to attack steps now. Hit OK. Slow down so I don't misclick something. Alright, he's at 18. 1, so that's blocks. Blocks. So that's 12. 4, 8, 12. So 12 over to him. 15, 18. Then Blueby. Nope. Oh. And Blueby. And then Blueby. So then this will kill Jehu. And then Blueby will be down 5, 11. He'll be at 10. So unless Jehu's got something in his hand. So unless Jehu has something in his hand that he can get. Like, because he only has to is one mana. But he got like a fatal push, you know? You never know. Blocks. Because if he double blocks, he's dead. Yep, that's fine. Hit OK. It doesn't have lifelink, so it's redundant. Alright, he's dead. He's at 10. Good game. Alright, let's see what Blueby can do right now. Dark Depths is on the battlefield. Alright, I have at least one land, two lands. So I'll give everything plus two, plus two. And two damage. It's one less damage. I can I get the Crows and Birch too, so that's plus four, plus four. Alright. So I have the game right now. He just needs to... Like... Do something, you know? But like, he could do anything. He's a full card of set of cards in his hand. I got rid of the chromatic lantern, so he's down. He's only down to two blue mana, technically three, with the death right shaman. Oh, blue beast giving the GGs. All right. So that was the game. That's pretty epic. Not gonna lie. I wonder really if, what blue is gonna finish off with. Let's see. If he's got any following last minute plays. All right. Plays out Tassiger. Tassiger is on the field now. He can activate Tassiger. I somehow put my commander in my graveyard by accident, just realizing that now. He could probably exile it, but we'll see how that goes. Alright. Mills two cards, and he can get back Time Twister. That's fine. Like, I'm not going to give back the Psych Rift. He can't, he can't use the Psych Rift anyway, because uh, it'd be only single targeted at this point. But, still epic. All right, good game, good game. All right, that was a lot, a lot of fun. So landfall, still pretty damn epic, not going to lie. All right, so we won the match. I will catch you in the recap. All right, peace. Now that, that was a beautiful game. Now there definitely could have been a different outcome if that Cyclonic Rift were able to resolve, but that still was epic. Landfall has been, and forever will be, my favorite mechanic. There was so much going on with my turns. At first, I thought the max three landfall triggers would be annoying, but no, not even the least bit. With all the flicker effects added in the deck, it can make everything work out so much smoother. This is absolutely a deck everyone should play and try out. This deck is quite inexpensive to build, and with the amount of power, it, it amazes me. You can extremely easily upgrade the deck too. Landfall is a massive universal ability that can span all directions. Now they have added white to the mix of the landfall shenanigans, it has become just that much better. What I liked most about the deck was the Ruin Ghost, as it was able to let me flicker a land every single turn, so if I only had one land under play, I had another landfall trigger. Now there are several cards in this deck I simply just don't saw any value in. First off, there's Unravel the Aether, as Return to Nature would just simply be a better option. I'd also remove Read the Ruins and Kamal's Druidic Vow, as it just didn't feel they'd brought anything to the deck. Which cards do you think we should be removed? The biggest change to the deck that I would upgrade would be to add Scoot Swarm, Felidar Retreat, and Lotus Cobra, as I'm playing them in Brawl right now and in Standard, and they are putting so much work in. For me, I'm looking to build a Mutate version of this Omnat deck. Once I discovered that Scoot Swarm's ability tagged along with the Mutation, I absolutely needed to build a Commander deck. Landfall and Mutate together can be some serious value at almost zero cost. 
Omneth Lucas of Creation is extremely powerful and is easily the top choice for landfall commanders. And at any budget, you're guaranteed to have fun gameplay. What do you think Watson's going to do when they add black to Omnath? I can only imagine how powerful that's going to be and how busted that will be. In today's episode, we asked the question, can Omnath, Locus of Creation, compete for just some quarters? In today's episode, we discovered the answer. It was an absolute yes. I hope you enjoyed the gameplay today, and I hope that you can see that even playing on a budget allows you to have a strong deck and able to compete at any level. In this week's episode of Can the Quarters Compete? I would absolutely agree that, yes, it can compete. And once again, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification for future videos. And once again, thanks for watching. And until next time, peace.